Hi, I'm Maggie Cadigan. I'm a registered dietitian here at Alatest Medical. A lot of times when people get the results back, first of all, they're very overwhelmed, but secondly, they say, what do I do with the results? So what I'd like to speak to you today about is how to interpret your results. Using a 96 sample patient result, we also do offer a larger panel of 184 foods, but today I'm gonna to speak about the 96. However, just to remind you that recommendations I'm making are for both tests. Um, it's an IgG food sensitivity test. So the first thing I would make sure you do is discuss it with your doctor. So sometimes the doctor will give you different recommendations and because you're a patient of that doctor, I would suggest following their instructions if they're any different from the instructions I'm gonna to give to you today about deciphering your results. So for this patient, I'm gonna use Apple as a example, but it's the same for all the foods. The first thing I would do is look at the score, and then next to that, you'll see a class. And next to the class, you'll see asterisks. So you can get a class one, a class two, a class three. But you also wanna look at the reference range down on the bottom left corner to even get more information about how to make this an easy and fun process for you to eliminate these foods. So like I said, this patient's positive to apple. It's a class one food. So what we would suggest is you would avoid all the foods in red. Some of you may have a black and white copy, so then you need to look at the score and the number of asterisks to the right of that. So that's your classes. If there's two, a number two and two asterisks, that's a class two. If there's three and three asterisks, that's a class three. So we suggest you avoid all these foods that are either in red or, like I said, with one, two, or three next to them for about 10 weeks. After that time, you can slowly reintroduce your foods, beginning with the class one foods. So if you think of these as not class one is mild, class two is moderate, class three is more severe, that's really not a good way to think about it. Think about it, it's the length of time you're avoiding the food. Because for example, this apple is a class one and the score is fairly low. It's actually close to being negative, it's 0.218. So that's a very low class one is what we call it here. So we still feel that those numbers are significant and they can be contributing to your symptoms, class ones, class twos, class threes. If you have a lot of positive foods and you're having a lot of difficulty finding things to eat, go ahead and look at that score. Again, check with your doctor, but a lot of times we'll suggest if you want to have a class one food occasionally during the 10 weeks, that's okay. Your number still should trend down eventually. You're just gonna have to maybe avoid it a little bit longer. So after you've gone through the avoidance phase, first of all, congratulations, because it's not easy, but it is worth it. You'll feel so much better. After you've gone through the 10 weeks of avoidance and you're ready to reintroduce, you pull your results back out and you can begin with the class one. So like I said it before, those can go in earlier than the class twos or the class threes. So you test a food on the first day after your 10 weeks of avoidance. You, I'm gonna use apple again as the example. So you're eating the apple on day one. You can have as many portions as you'd like. So two, three apples, some applesauce, whatever you like. Don't eat it on day two, three, and four. On the fifth day, if none of your symptoms have flared, that's indicating you're tolerating the apple and you're ready to pick another food and do the same. Once you put all the ones back in, you do the same for the twos and finally the threes. When you make it through introducing all those foods, try not to go back to eating repetitively. Try to make sure you're eating foods on a rotation basis as best you can, every four days versus every day, say for an apple or whichever you're positive to. I just also wanted to mention that we do also offer a wellness plan, which explains most of what I've just said and, and more, and it gives you a lot of recommendations about the big foods that are very common to be popular in this country, which is gluten, dairy, um, eggs sometimes. So the wellness plan will give you a customized diet, actually. It's a four-day rotation diet of what we're suggesting you eat while you're avoiding these positive foods for the 10 weeks. It also gives you a shopping list and a little wallet card. So if you may be going out to dinner or you're going to the grocery store shopping, you can really just bring the wallet card and know which foods that you want to avoid instead of bringing the whole wellness plan. So hopefully that helps and we're always available by telephone or email to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you.